Hello! It seems, uh, you've stumbled into my problem. They locked me up. They locked me up and threw away the key. They took one look at me and said, Hey, you! Walking down the street! Listening to those Raycon earbuds! Are those Raycon earbuds? The ones that give you 8 hours playtime? 32 hours battery life in total? Seamless Bluetooth pairing? And a compact design for a comfortable noise isolating fit? And you, and you know me guys, I said nah man, you crazy. Cause I knew if I said yeah, they were gonna take them from me. They were gonna beat me up and take them from me. And then they got mad at me for lying to them because clearly they were Raycon earbuds. They're super recognizable due to the wide range of fun, iconic colors and patterns they offer with no wires or stems or nothing. So they beat me up in a rage, a blind rage, stole my Raycon earbuds from me, and now I'm rotting in this prison cell, as you can see. I bet they're having a grand old time using the earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. I'm gonna die in jail now, on account of, on account of they locked me up for lying to them about the earbuds. Did I mention a 30 day free return policy? So if you're not gonna help me bust out of here, I don't deserve to be here, then at least click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash raygun to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. But also call for help, cause I'm, I'm, I'm not showing it right now because I'm trying to be strong, but like I'm scared in a way that I've never been. Hello? You guys know that relatable feeling when you're making a YouTube video and then you agree to put it for a sponsor deadline, but then it's not really ready yet, so you gotta come up with something really, really quick to fill, to fill the deadline? You ever feel that? This video is purely so that the Pinkertons don't kill me. Today, I'm going to be A-ing your cues, because a lot of you got some really interesting minds out there, and I thought I'd pick them. I figure before the Weird Wide Web episode is ready, uh, why not? touch base with the audience. So I solicited a bunch of questions from you guys over on my Instagram page. You can go over and follow if you're one of those people who use Instagram. I don't know, I use it sometimes to post little photos of my life. Either way, let's get the show on the road. What the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, how much time do you got? I mean, ADHD for sure, uh, the crippling anxiety. Uh, I think I have a thyroid thing. I think the better question would be like, you know, what is right with you exactly? What career would you have if entertainment wasn't possible? I think I'd be a villain of some kind. I think I'd go around villaining. I already kind of do that as is. People are really, really upset with me all the time. Grandmother in resin. True? No, the grandmother in resin is, is not true. I posted this horrifying image of like a, a deceased grandmother encased in resin. It's an entirely fake image. But I posted it on Twitter with like this big fake story because I felt like spreading misinformation that day. And uh, it worked. I found it on like thousands of different Facebook pages a couple hours later. It's my biggest tweet by far, not in pure like likes and engagement on Twitter, but in the sense that it's been like freebooted and stolen to high heaven. Like I've seen crazy variations of this tweet already. So no, the grandmother in resin is not true. I lied to you for my own amusement. What's your opinion on Transformers? And are you going to see Rise of Beasts? I'm not big on Transformers because uh, it's a hot button issue. Can I say something? I know there's like a lot of like, kind of like gender bends and like race swaps going on in, in, in uh, Hollywood and, and in different types of media for diversity sake, like, you know, B Black Little Mermaid and all that stuff, which is totally fine. But I do think if there was ever, if there was ever a retroactive retcon of an identity that would make the most sense, the Transformers should absolutely be trans. Like, it's it's a little crazy to assume that they wouldn't be, you know? Like, what the fuck? Man to woman is not exactly as big of a leap as, as man to car, man to Toyota Camry. But I've never, I, no, I, I don't care about trans, I never, I didn't grow up with Transformers. Like, I just didn't, I don't, I don't got that dog in me. I thought it was kind of neat that, like, you'd be like, I'm a robot man and now I'm a semi-truck. I thought it was kind of cool. But I, I, they never did anything for me, really. I think I was more of like a Power Rangers person where like they were, they were guys in giant mech suits. That was more my thing than, you know, the truck is a man. Surprise appearance from the Act Man. What is the probability that we will ever get another ODST spinoff game? Never happening. I have come to terms with the fact that Halo is just absolutely fucking dead. I, I, I don't, I have no 
hope whatsoever. I'm black pilled on the future of Halo. It's gone. It's it's in the it's in the dirt for me. The fact that they already made an ODST sequel and did it in a book and made like a bunch of weird choices in the book already like as is it's odst2 is ruined and, and never going to happen that was back when the series had identity direction and soul and unfortunately 343 didn't fucking listen to me i said in my last halo infinite video i said guys what you gotta do to save this game you gotta take it off the market you gotta do a final fantasy fucking whatever that that mmo thing is you gotta unrelease it make the game you meant to make and then post it later, have like a big re-revival type deal. But they're not doing that. What they're doing is they're kind of trudging along and they're slowly adding features. And it's it's like I said in the video, eventually some people are gonna be like, hey, did you hear about Halo Infinite? Ah, it's not horrible now. As opposed to, whoa, did you see that Halo Infinite came back on the scene and now it's fucking so cool? There's, I don't know, man, it's it's over. It's it's over, It's it's done. It really blows my fucking mind that they were handed this golden goose and they just they just couldn't figure it out. We're, we ain't getting another ODST sequel or an ODST spin-off game. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if there is no other Halo game after this. And by the way, if there is another Halo game after this, and I mean this sincerely, I'm not gonna care. Which is sad to say, but you know, it's true. What's the nicest looking guitar you have in your opinion? Hmm, hold on. These are my favorite looking guitars. This is just a, uh, you know, a white Epiphone Les Paul. And this, I don't know what it is, it's, it's an Ibanez, but I got this, it's a seven string Ibanez, and I got this from uh, Lyle Rath over from Pregame Discharge. He was kind enough to part with it, and I saw it, and I was like, I need, I need to have this. So this one's pretty special to me, but this one I have to admit is just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I have, a, I have, I don't know, there's just something about white electronics <laughs> that I just really, I don't know. I'm really, I, I really like them. It's why I love the Xbox 360 so much. It's like, it's something about, something about the white. I don't know. I don't know. Look at that, huh? How clean. Tits or ass? I'm a pussy guy. Worst airline experience? I, I don't even want to think about my worst airline experience. This is a long story short, but I was like really, really late to the airport because traffic happened and, and then the trains weren't running on time. And it was like a whole, every, everything that could go wrong went wrong and I was super stressed out about missing my flight. It was the only flight I had to the to this location on that day, the only one available. And I got to John F. Kennedy Airport, one of the busiest airports in New York City, 15 minutes before my flight left. And that sounds like not that sounds like not a big deal. Oh, 15 minutes. You gotta get through security. You gotta fucking it's a big airport, man. And I remember getting there like 15 minutes before the before the gates closed. And as I'm running out of my taxi with music blaring in my headphones, the music cuts out because, oh, I'm a genius. I left my phone in the taxi cab. I, I literally, I have never experienced anxiety like that in my entire life. The feeling of having your phone just missing in a New York City taxi cab with all of your like, you know, fucking credit cards and passwords and shit. I can't even express to you how stressful that was. That that I almost died, I think. You know that scene in Halo 4 where Master Chief goes through like that that evolution? I think that's what happened to me. I think I experienced millennia of evolution just from the sheer stress of that moment. I crumbled to my knees, I literally screamed, and then I, I, I like snapped out of it. I was like, I have to, f I need my phone. And so I snapped into like, you know, attack mode and I sprinted down the highway there were like a million different yellow cabs. I couldn't tell which one was mine. I just made an intuitive guess and it was the right one. And I fucking, you know, I grabbed my phone out of the, out of the taxi cab, but I had wasted like five minutes already. I get into the airline and there's like a big line for security. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm frazzled. I'm like leaking this anxious energy and I'm pushing people aside. I'm, I'm going through the security. I was like, I can't right now. I gotta go, I gotta go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't go. And I think the only reason nobody stopped me to beat me up is because I just exuded this unpredictable, anxious, scary energy. I'm honestly surprised security didn't do anything. So I finally get to security, I put my bags through. It is 9-11, not the tragedy, the time. 
and my gate closes at 9.15. I got four minutes to get from security to the gate. They pull my bag aside because my Switch triggers it. Fuck you, Nintendo. Editing, Chris. Also, by the way, I was getting constant notifications on my phone of my gate changing and different information from, you know, uh, airport personnel telling me, like, which gate was mine, and no answer was consistent. I had to just make an edge. I just had to guess. And so they're searching my bag. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then I finally get to the gate one minute one minute after it closes the door is closed i just made it i'm i barely got my fucking shoes on i look like a mess i'm sweating i'm crying a little bit and uh and they were kind enough to let me through but that that easily I am never not getting to the airport five hours early now. Where do you think edgy slash dark humor stops being funny? I don't think people fully understand what dark or edgy humor really means anymore. I think people just sort of think like, oh, if you say a slur, that's comedy. Or like, if you're just like offensive for the sake of being offensive, it's funny. It, it can be like amusing, I guess. But like, I, I don't, I wouldn't call it edgy humor, really. Like comedy still needs a punch, like you, like you still need a joke. At the very least, good delivery, you know? I think a lot of people just sort of take the easy road where they just sort of rely on edgy words or edgy phrases, or they just say, you know, awful shit ironically. And that's like somehow funny. Like I did a video a long time ago where I talked about just like this, this the, the nature of ironic humor the dude screaming on the counter about szechuan sauce from that rick and morty thing he might have been doing it ironically but he was still doing it you know like it doesn't change what you're doing if we were together and then i cheated on you ironically you know like <laughs> like you you still you're still doing it so to me i think edgy humor kind of stops being funny when it stops being clever there's a difference between somebody like george carlin really like playing with the art form and playing with language and using offensive language to kind of illustrate a really clever workaround or a really clever point and like some random guy on twitter just spamming the f slur you know like i, I don't i don't know it's not really good enough just to be edgy and dark you gotta have you gotta have a joke lined up it's why I think this submarine shit is actually super interesting. Because if for some reason you've been living under a rock, but a bunch of rich people, they took like this kind of submersible, uh, this makeshift submarine. They paid $250,000 per person to sit on this in this little drainage pipe to go visit the wreckage of the Titanic on a submarine, really, really small, really, really cramped, really, really makeshift, controlled by a fucking Mad Cats controller, basically. And they're and and they're they're dead. They're gone. And there's a lot of jokes being made about it because I mean the, the situation is just so fucking insane. Like there's a really ironic angle to it. Like what are the what like it's so fucking crazy that a bunch of rich dudes paid like exorbitant amounts of money to sit on a submarine that was like made with like really cut corners and didn't pay attention to safety regulations just so they can get a view of the wreckage of a national and global tragedy. That has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. Where do I sign? Look, there's there's humor there, absolutely. But just being like, LOL, dead people, haha. -ha. I don't know, that's not funny. Not because it's offensive, but because it's just bland and boring. This guy just has a photo of him asking you to be put in the video, please. So, you know, there you go, that's you, fucking asshole. What was it like returning to making videos after all the time you spent training for Creator Clash? It was dope. I, I, I was really excited to get back into it. I was really excited to get back into the swing of things because, I mean, low-key, I'm just not... I'm not cut out for for, bo I'm, for boxing, for, like, for, for these kinds of... Sw I'm not a morning person. You ask me to get up at 7 a.m., I don't, I don't know what you're, who you're fucking talking to. I'm naturally... A, I go to sleep naturally. My natural clock puts me to sleep at around, like, 6 a.m., 5 a.m. So when you ask me to wake up around that time, I'm just like, it's... I can't do it. So I was really excited to stop because I could finally, like, live my life in the way that I knew was natural to me and most comfortable to me. But, uh, I don't know, it was, it's, it's a bittersweet feeling, because there is a structure there, there is just this feeling of, like, getting better at something that you otherwise wouldn't be getting better at, d stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something cool. Creator Clash was a really cool experience, I'm happy I did it, but I, I see some people in this, in this question thread asking if I would ever do it again. No, I, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> hey Chris, how do you tolerate Sweeney's shit takes on superheroes in video games? You gotta be patient with people, you know? I've learned a great deal of patience dealing with Sweeney's horrendous opinions. 
And it's just something that, uh, you know, you get used to. It's like, uh, exposure therapy. If you got arachnophobia and you spend a lot of time touching spiders, eventually the spiders don't phase you. And that's kind of how it feels like with Sweeney, where it's like, there are things that he says to this day that, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago would have really pissed me off and did piss me off back then. Now I just, I have to let it wash off me. Like, oh, okay, interesting. What does Paul smell like? I don't have Paul with me because I'm currently in New York at my New York studio. I would say he smells like a Glade plug-in. I don't even think I'm joking about that. Most anticipated game? Starfield. Easily. I know people are going to be upset. I know people are going to be like, wow, you're not excited for Spider-Man 2? Of course I'm excited for Spider-Man 2, but I, I don't think, I don't know. Spider-Man 2, I feel like I know what, I know what Spider-Man 2 is going to be. It's going to be like a really good story and it's going to be more Spider-Man. Like, I, and I don't need it to be anything more than that. But I'm also, like, very curious about Starfield. It looks really cool. Uh, I know it's a Bethesda game, so, like, you know, who knows? Fingers crossed. It could be a mess. But, I don't know. There's something about Starfield that seems special to me. I don't know what it is. It seems ambitious, and I like ambition. It's, it's, it's a contagious kind of positivity. What is objectively the best video game of all time? Not your favorite, but the best. I'm going to say something, and I don't care if anybody agrees with me. Because it's, I think I could prove this scientifically, that Tetris is the best game that, e that has ever existed. As far as video games go, I don't think there is a more perfect video game than Tetris. If you, and, and by the way, this extends to like most variants of Tetris, especially some, especially Tetris Effect. Tetris Effect is a perfect game. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's got a great soundtrack. I think even just if you go back to the original Tetris theme, it's a great theme. And it's a game that everybody can understand very, very easily. It's like very accessible, but it's also very complex. And it, there's like a lot of expression for skill. When you see somebody who's really good at Tetris, Zach Hadel, fucking Psychic Pebbles, a monster at Tetris, still blows my mind to this day. I still think about it. So when you have something that has like a high skill ceiling that is easily accessible, that everybody and their grandparents understand how to play, there's something to be said about that, and, uh, you know, I, I think, I think, I, I don't think Tetris is my favorite game, you know, by, f I think that's probably Shadow of the Colossus, but Tetris, man, perfect, pristine. Now, there's a lot more questions here, and, and maybe I'll save some of them for a future video, I don't know, it, it depends on how, it depends on how good a video like this is, I don't know, I, I know this is like an inherently, like, way more of a niche type of video, it's not about something, so I'm not expecting this video to go fucking gangbusters or anything. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. If, if you liked it, let me know if you want another one. I don't know. I gotta get back to uh, working on this weird wide web uh, so I can make the June deadline. Hopefully I can do that. Social media in the description. And, by the way, I'm revamping my Patreon page really, really soon. I think I kind of already have, slightly in some ways. So, uh, if, you, if you're curious... Patreon.com slash Chris Reagan, you know, uh, there'll be, you know, there'll be some stuff coming. Anyway, uh, I love you. Be careful, be good, and behave. I'll, uh, I'll see you in hell.